CPD technology offers different advantages over traditional drug discovery. Most important is that it can go after the drug the protein targets that were so far classified as undruggable. And this is something that brings a lot of new edge. There is also a second advantage, and this is different pharmacology, but maybe I will refer to that a little bit later. What we have to remember though is that TPD also overcome limitations of classical drugs, classical inhibitors, such as it can overcome cancer resistance and mitigate some side effects. TPD is not essentially different from different therapies in terms of development. It offers many benefits that are typical to all the therapies. The development is more or less also the same as all classical drugs, but it is different in terms of how it acts. So it offers very different pharmacology. It's the so-called event-driven pharmacology rather than inhibition, which is a classical blocking pharmacology. This different pharmacology actually in turn can provide much smaller dosing of drugs than classical inhibitors or, or antibodies or antagonists. This is something very different. It can also switch off all the functions of pathologic proteins and this brings a lot of therapeutic benefits. And as I said before, it can also overcome cancer resistance. So these are the, the main advantages of TPD. There is currently 15 drug candidates in clinical development, approximately 600 compounds in preclinical development. And you can think of that there are 400 companies working with targeted protein degradation out there. So it's, uh, it's pretty advanced. But on top of that, there are at least three approved drugs out there. There is Revlimit, Pomalist, and Fulvestrand. All these are or were at some point uh, in their career, so to speak. They were blockbusters, so the, the technology is validated and uh, we think that looking backwards to what was happening four years before, it's enormous development of TPD advancements. Our portfolio is biased and focused towards oncology, but we also have in our uh, pipeline drug candidates that would have a lot of benefits in autoimmune diseases. However, our main focus is currently in our CT01 project on liver cancer and in CT03 on some solid tumors such as lung and breast cancers, but also on hematological malignancies. We think that targeting liver cancer is extremely important because it's extremely debilitating disease. There is a growing incidence of, of cases worldwide. There are nearly one million cases out there of, uh, of liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma. What is also very important is the second uh, most deadly cancer out there and there are no good therapies to, to treat liver cancer. We think that this is actually the, one of the most important unmet medical needs. Second thing is we are focusing on targeting protein called MCL1 which is the anti-apoptotic protein and this is one of the most important cancer resistant factors. So once you can remove this protein from organism, you can have potentially intervention in many different malignancies. Two thousand twenty one and beginning of two thousand twenty two were exciting times for TPD. Uh, we had two reports of uh, uh, clinical studies from uh, our Venus and we also had uh, uh, some clinical input from Chimera and C4 Therapeutics. So the, the area is coming alive in the clinic and clearly some of the companies who are not yet in the clinic such as Captor and also Monterosa Therapeutics have also been uh, announcing preclinical data so I think the science is moving forward quite well and uh, data so far is looking positive. There's Actually, one of the landmark deals occurred in 2021 uh, when our Venus uh, announced their major collaboration with Pfizer in the field of uh, estrogen receptors. And uh, that deal was really significant. It was like $650 million as an upfront payment, $350 million of investment in the company, plus very large milestones in the future. So it really is a testament to the kind of deal that can be achieved. Of course, we won't know until we get there if CAPTA will ever achieve those kind of deals, but certainly it's an indication of what's possible in TPD. And in additional, uh, additionally, uh, Nurex expanded their deal with uh, Sanofi uh, as well uh, in one of their products. So yes, there has been quite a bit of uh, deal making and particularly large deal making in the area. And some smaller companies have also done deals. There was probably about 10 or 11 deals in 2021. 
I can think of two different kinds of partnering deals that are possible. Uh, we have a pipeline of five projects uh, and the lead ones are CTO1 and CTO3 and we can imagine uh, that those will be partnered at some point with a, a big pharma um, and that we call a pipeline collaboration or a pipeline uh, uh, deal um, and those kind of things are really ideally done either late preclinical or early clinical so that we get the maximum return for our shareholders and therefore for that for us that's looking like the 2023-2024 period uh, for those advanced projects but in the, the nearer term uh, there is a second kind of collaboration which is also very interesting which is that some of our uh, potential big pharma partners have targets that they want to work on and they want to find the new drugs to and we can combine our platform with their target uh, to, to do what we call a discovery collaboration and, and there uh, we have a, uh, quite a few discussions ongoing, uh, quite advanced um, and you know obviously in a biotech company you can never tell when a deal is going to be signed. I think in general we can say that there are the, the first wave of, of TPD companies the likes of Chimera, C4 Therapeutics, Arvenus and we're probably about one or two years behind those companies because those companies are already in the clinic and we're just heading to the clinic. But on the other hand, we're probably about a similar phase of development to Monterosa Therapeutics, which is also listed on NASDAQ, who are also in preclinical phase uh, when they did their IPO. So, so I, I would say that we have one advantage, which is we are actually learning from what those other companies are doing and therefore we're advancing quite quickly. Uh, as we see from uh, all of the data we've been putting out recently in, in our lead project. The last year has been very intensive in the labs and outside. On the research field, the most important elements are definitely announcement and milestones in our two projects, CTO1 and CTO3. We are particularly interested in the timing of the start of the clinical trials for CTO1 and CTO3, which should be early as next year. We have a stable and secure financial position for the foreseeable future, thanks to the resources we have managed to obtain in the form of grants and the IPO offering proceeds. Funds available allow our research teams to completely concentrate on development and delivering the next milestones. Therefore, we are not currently considering any extraordinary new form of financing. Thanks to the efforts of the entire team, we managed to confirm the company's position on the global market as one of the front runners of TPD technology, and we are excited to see what the next developments in our pipeline will be. It's a great comfort to work in such conditions. <music>